What we term an electrochemical cell is a device that's put together so that we can either change chemical energy into electrical work or electrical work into chemical energy. If we take our reaction from before where we had put the strip of zinc into copper sulfate and we watched how the copper played it out onto the zinc, what we want to do then to make a cell is to physically separate the two half reactions. And the way that we end up doing this is putting zinc in a zinc-based solution and the copper in a copper-based solution. We separate them and force the electrons to go through the circuit where they can do actual useful work before they're allowed to finish what they were trying to do. We can see here that zinc is acting as the anode. This is where the oxidation takes place. Oxidation is loss, O-I-L. Oxidation is loss of what? Of electrons. That's why this thing went up from a zero oxidation state to a plus two oxidation state. And as a result, the zinc is gradually coming off of this and entering into the solution. This will be eroded away. On the other hand, when it gets over here to the cathode, cathode is where you have the reduction. And so reduction is gain, rig. So oil rig, R-I-G, reduction is gain. Gain of what? Well, the electrons, which means the number is going to go down. It goes from the copper that's a plus two that's in the solution, aqueous, to plating onto the, the cathode here. And so this will actually gain mass as these plate onto it. But of course, a circuit has to be able to complete itself. So in between here is what they could term a porous bridge. And so these are electrons doing this, but it's not electrons moving this way. Instead, what you have are the sulfate ions, which are negative ions, that are able to move across and continue this process. And why wouldn't they? The copper plus two is plating out. It's no longer a plus two. So hey, they have no reason to stick around. They head over to this side. So this is what happens. And we can say the anode is where the oxidation takes place. Notice this is an A, that's an O. They're both vowels. The cathode is where the reduction takes place. They're both consonants. This is, helps us remember it because it's, you know, pretty new stuff to all of us. When we have a cell diagram, it will show us symbolically how the cell was configured. We had a nice picture before. So what do we do in a cell diagram? We put it in a particular order. The double bars up and down here separate the stuff that's anode from the stuff that's cathode. Notice anode is earlier in the alphabet than cathode is. So we can think of this as being in alphabetical order to help us remember this. So on our previous slide, we would represent it as the zinc was the anode. This was the solution that it was in. We don't bother even saying what the, uh, th that there was sulfate. We don't bother with the spectator ions. We just mention that the zinc is aqueous in a plus two oxidation state. And then on the, in the other side is the liquid, the copper, as, a, as an ion in an aqueous state, and the solid cathode. So anode to cathode. Anode where oxidation happens, numbers going up. Cathode where reduction happens, numbers going down. And you can see that sort of just flows again, left to right, to try to to make that easier. If you happen to know the molarity of the solution, you can put it here in place of the AQ because once you say uh, uh, that there's a molarity, you're going to say, oh yeah, of course it must be aqueous. But we don't list the spectator ions. You should go look at sample exercise 17.3 and go through it because it is more complicated. There's an additional solid and there are components that are gases, which we don't have in this one but which sometimes exists. So make sure you go look at that sample exercise. And now we're going to do one. 
we have write a balanced chemical equation and the cell diagram for an electrochemical cell that has a copper cathode immersed in a solution of copper ions and an aluminum anode immersed in a solution of aluminum ions. All right, so remember, remember you wanna do this alphabetically in order to get it set up. So we wanna do the anode first. So anode first and then cathode. All right, they told us that it was the aluminum that was the anode. All right, so an aluminum anode, so it is a solid, and it is in a solution that has aluminum plus three ions. And then on the other side, we're gonna have a solution of copper plus two ions and the cathode is going to be solid copper. There we go, we've written it out. We're reminding ourselves this side's anode, this side's cathode. Anode is where the oxidation occurs. Cathode is where the reduction occurs. And I have a little way that I like to remember this. It's anox and a red cat. That way I remember Reduction happens at the cathode. Oxidation happens at the anode. It's right, an, ox, and a red cat. <laughs> so what is happening here? The half reaction is that the aluminum is becoming aluminum with a charge, aqueous solution, Oh, this is zero total charge. This has a plus three. No, 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 it does not. We're gonna generate three electrons when we do that. Over here, what is happening over here? We have that copper that is currently an ion in aqueous solution is becoming a solid copper. Well, in order for that to happen, it has to pick up two electrons. So we had what was happening at the anode and we have what was happening at the cathode. So this anode one is the oxidation half reaction. And this one, this is the cathode. So this is the reduction half reaction. So this, we did our cell diagram. They also want the balanced chemical equation. Well, if I look at this, I see left side, two electrons, right side, three electrons, least common multiple is six. So I will need to multiply this one by two and this one by three. So two aluminums. Oh, you know what? Let's just do this. I'll put in all the phases later. Two aluminum ions and six electrons and multiply this by three. So I have three copper ions and six electrons becoming three copper. And then when I add them together, I'll be able to cancel out the six electrons. And I can say that two aluminum, aluminum as a solid, and three copper ions, aqueous solution, this is gone, will become two aluminum ions in aqueous solution, and three coppers as a solid.